गाइस गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू दिस लाइव सेशन ऑन द क्वांटिटेटिव एप्टीट्यूड और द न्यूमेरिकल एबिलिटी सेक्शन फॉर द एसबीआई पीओ प्रीलिमिनरी एग्जाम फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस ईयर्स पेपर ब्रॉट यू बाय टैलेंट स्प्रिंट वेल आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर हेल्दी एंड सो इज योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर द एसबीआई क्लर्क्स प्रीलिमिनरी एग्जाम व्हिच इज टेंटेटिवली शेड्यूल्ड टू स्टार्ट इन द मंथ ऑफ जुलाई ऑलराइट so i i was just looking at the chat before uh, going live and i think many of you were discussing about how many hours do you spend on preparation and how is the preparation going and about your stronger and weaker areas so i think it's it's time now for you all to strategize your preparation right given that we have just about a month left for this gpu preliminary exam right which in my view is the biggest battle of the year when it comes to competitive exams right so i hope your preparation is uh, you know in in the high gear now and you are practicing a lot right someone was mentioning that i'm i'm practicing previous papers or practicing mock papers for about 4 to 5 hours a day which is very very important right so ideally uh, your preparation by now should uh, go to the next mode which is practice right learning mode should be over by now where you have learned all the concepts shortcut formulae right and smart methods to answer questions from different sections and then comes a practice mode where you just keep practicing what you have learned right as much as possible so that you can you can maximize your score in that limited time uh, given in the exam right you know that sbipo preliminary exam is a test of just one hour where 100 questions have to be answered right 35 each from uh, quantitative aptitude and reasoning ability and 30 from english language now 60 minutes for 100 questions is too short but then it is the competition right and you have to beat the competition and for that you really have to practice a lot okay so i would say the only shortcut is to practice more right the more you practice the easier it gets and the live sessions uh, brought to you by talent sprint on wednesdays at 6 pm will definitely enhance your preparedness for this exam and will help you boost your scores right we have already had one session on the preparation strategy where we discussed about uh, various uh, important things that you have to do on a daily basis so that you can you know go for the exam fully prepared and this is the next session for the sbaq exam where we will discuss about the numerical ability section or the quantitative aptitude section uh, from the previous year's sbaq preliminary exam paper right similarly we have sessions coming up on uh, reasoning and english language as well you can join us every wednesday at 6 pm and you know get ready for this uh, very important and highly competitive sbaq preliminary exam but before we get into the session today i think a very important announcement that the payment for uh, the sbipo application uh, has been extended right the date for last date for payment has been extended to 27th of may right so all those who were not able to complete that part of their application can do it now you have two more days to go but i would suggest and recommend that you finish it at the earliest possible to avoid those last minute challenges of heavy traffic on those you know website and uh, delaying the process and hence getting uh, left behind because of all that okay so guys all the best i'm sure uh, you will do well in the exam now coming to today's session as you all know is on the previous year paper so what i'll do is quickly run through the previous paper i'll show you what were the different types of questions asked and from which topics were the questions asked in this section of the sbipo preliminary exam and then solve some of those questions all right i hope all of you are able to uh, see the live stream without any difficulty and if there is any uh, problem uh, in the picture quality you have the control in your hands right there is a settings button available on the bottom right of the video screen using which you can enhance the picture resolution and by which the quality would improve but remember your bandwidth has to support the high quality picture that you choose all right so optimize it accordingly and get ready for the quantitative aptitude or the so called numerical ability section of the previous year paper so shall we start right and a lot of you have uh, confirmed that acknowledge that we can start so let me share my screen with all of you right we'll first go through the sbipo paper of previous year right the preliminary exam paper and then choose some of those uh, some of the typical and difficult uh, questions from that and look at the smart ways of arriving at the answers for those questions so here we go sharing my screen with all of you now here's a pdf i hope all of you are able to see this without any difficulty so like you can see the first set of questions in the paper last year were from 
data interpretation right which which talks about data regarding number of candidates appearing for civil services and engineering services examination in the years 2007 8 9 and 10 right and here are the different questions asked along with. So basically, this was a five marks question on data interpretation. So there is a tabular form that is given to us. And this talks about uh, the data over four years, right? From 2007 to 2010 uh, in civil services and engineering services, uh, you know, examinations. And then there are five questions asked along with. Like, like the first question here is the total number of candidates who appeared for CS and ES together in 2011 was 25% more than the total number of candidates who appeared for the same together in 2010. How many female candidates appeared for both the exams together in 2011 if they formed two-fifths of the total number of candidates appearing for both ES and CS in that year? So the question itself would take about 15 seconds to you know read and understand. But then if you are good in calculations, if you follow the smart methods, answering this would take another 15 seconds. So altogether I would say in less than 30 seconds, you will be able to uh, you know, convert this to one mark. Okay? And then there are other questions like what is the ratio of number of graduates who had appeared for ES in 2010 to the number of graduates who had appeared for CS in 2010. So five questions from uh, data interpretation and then there are some independent questions. I think uh, let's not look at the complete paper, only the question that we are going to solve. Right? So the first one here, I mean the questions independent uh, questions that have been asked are like this A, B and C start a small business. A contributes, uh, you know, some part of the total capital invested in the business. B contributes as much as A and C together. The total profit at end of year was 5,200. So what was C's share in the profit? So that's a question from uh, partnership. Then there is a question on time and work, right? You can see the next question is on time and work. All right. So, so this was uh, the type of uh, paper, right? I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll quickly... Uh, just read out the topics which have been covered, right? Instead of showing every question there, right? Let's let's quickly uh, run through the paper. So the first set, like I said, was a data interpretation uh, question, which was on tabular format, where the data was on number of candidates who had appeared for two different types of examinations. Now there's one more data interpretation question that has been asked here, right? Which was on line graphs. Now this says the data is related to number of books purchased from two libraries, A and B, during six years. So again, there's a line graph, uh, the x-axis is different years there from 2003 to 2008 and the y-axis talks about the number of books that have been purchased from two different libraries. So A and B are the two different libraries and number of books purchased from each of those libraries. So that is a very simple graph to understand and then five questions followed by, right? So altogether 10 questions from data interpretation. Then there were five questions on quadratic equations, right? Where Two equations were given, we were supposed to solve both the equations and establish the relationship between the variables there, right? The relationship between x and y. So this has been a popular question in all the SBI exams, right? SBI PU as well as SBI clubs, where we have to solve the given quadratic equations and, you know, arrive at the relationship between the variables there. So five questions from equations. So you have to focus on these kind of topics there, right? Assuming that similar questions or similar pattern would be followed. Then we have already looked at one question from, uh, you know, uh, this topic of partnership there. Then there were five questions on number series. Now number series again is an important area which is tested in SBI exams or in general in bank exams, right? So five questions on number series, we have to find out what comes in uh, place of the question mark. Then there's one question on time and work. There's one question on simple and compound interest. There's one question on allegations and mixtures. One question on ages. Right, then one more question on allegations and mixtures, or we can say percentages. Right, question on percentages. There was one question asked on probability. Right, then uh, one question on mensuration, uh, one question on time and distance, and there was one on ratios and proportions. So, if you see, there are a lot of independent questions covering the various topics of arithmetic ability. Right, time and work, time and distance, percentages, mensuration partnership, profit and loss, ratio and proportion, etc. Right? So basically they have touched upon almost every topic from quantitative ability, right? Though it was called numerical ability, it is not just test of your numerical skills. They have also tested your arithmetic uh, ability there, right? Then 
Uh, what are the other questions? Right, and then five questions on simplifications, right? What not simplifications, approximations in fact. What approximate value will come in a place of question mark in the given questions? So five questions have been given with different arithmetic operators, right? All we have to do is simplify it and find out the approximate value that comes in place of question mark. Right? So please note that simplifications and approximations is a very important part of bank exams, right? Especially when it comes to uh, SBI exams, right? So that's about the 35 questions. So if you if you look at it, there were 10 questions on data interpretation, 5 from a line graph, 5 on tabular uh, form, then 5 questions on number series, 5 questions on equations, quadratic equations, and 5 questions on approximations. So 10 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 25. And the remaining 10 questions were all one mark questions each from different topics of arithmetic aptitude. So as such, they have touched upon all the uh, different areas of Quaternative aptitude there. So this this shows that you have to be prepared with everything. Right? Generally, there is an assumption that they focus more on data interpretation, which is true, but that doesn't mean that they do not ask questions from the other areas. Right? So I would say you should ensure that you have learned all the concepts, shortcuts, and the different formulae. Right? It's like like for example, questions from mensurations cannot be answered unless you know the formula. There, right? It is a formula oriented topic. Right? So all the important formulae and the smart methods of solving such. Once you are done with that, thorough with all the concepts from all the topics, you can keep practicing more and more questions. All right? I'm sure Talent Sprint is going to be uh, uh, the best companion that you can get for your preparation. Right? Not just for the SBAP exam, but for all the other exams, uh, all the other bank exams as well. Right? You can explore about it on our website, uh, which is talentsprint.com. And I'm I'm uh, I'm also sure that who have already enrolled for our program uh, can help you understand better about it, right? They'll, they'll be able to give you uh, a genuine feedback. Now let's uh, start solving these questions. I think we have spent time and understood the areas that are tested, right? In fact, there's nothing that we have to leave there, right? No stone has to be left on turn, right? Cover everything. So let us now go back uh, to the screen and solve some of these questions, right? I think We'll start with the data interpretation question. There were two questions asked last year. One was on a line graph and the other was on table. So let's solve that uh, tabular question there, right? Five questions asked on that. And then look at some of the independent questions, okay? We'll try and do as much as possible in the session today. And when we have one more session on uh, numerical ability from previous paper, I think we should be able to cover the rest of this. Okay, so here we go. Sharing my screens again with all of you. So, Here's the first set of questions that we are going to solve today, which is on data interpretation. So, like you can see the directions here say that the data is regarding number of candidates appearing for civil services and engineering services examination in the years 2007, 2008, 9, and 10 from a particular country XYZ. So, try and understand the data clearly, right? Because uh, without uh, being fully aware of what the data is and what all uh, values or parameters you can measure from this, you will not be able to solve the questions. Right? So first, focus on the data, understand what is given there and then try to answer the given question. We will take one question at a time. So here is the first one uh, on your screen. Right? This says the total number of candidates who appeared for CS and ES together in 2011 was 25% more than the total number of candidates who appeared for the same together in 2010. How many female candidates appeared for both the exams together in 2011 if they formed two-fifths of the total number of candidates appearing for both CS and ES that year? So that's a long one. But like I said, 36 or 30 seconds is uh, more than sufficient to arrive at the answer. So your time starts now. I'll give you about 45 seconds to one minute, right? And then look at the solution. Okay, I get the first response from Bhaskar and he says it should be 58,000, option 2. I'll wait for a few more responses before we look at the solution there. Nirmal has also got 58,000. Shubhendu says option 2, which is 58,000 there. Malik has also got 58,000. Ranjit has got 58. So clearly, uh, all of you have got the same answer, right? Option 2, 58,000. A few more per seconds and then we look at the solution. It's, it's all about your calculation ability, right? 
if you can improve on your calculations before you head for the SBIQ exam, I'm sure your score will shoot up, right? Vikas Yadav has also given us a solution. He said it is 116 into 125 upon 100 into 2 by 5. Okay, so I think time now to look at the solution. See, let us understand the table first, right? Before looking at the question, you should be very clear about the data given there, right? So the data here is, uh, you know, in a tabular format, the first column of which is different years, 2007, 8, 9, 10. Now look at the two categories here, civil services examination and engineering services examination. Now it says, in each category, we have two columns, total number of candidates appeared and graduates out of the total candidates appeared in percentage. Right, so the first column talks about total number of candidates appeared and second column talks about the graduates out of the total candidates appeared in that category. Right, and see this is given in percentage. So in 2007, we can say the number of candidates which have appeared is 58,000. Right, remember it is 58,000. All the numbers here are given in thousands. Okay, all the numbers here are given in thousands. I think that point is missing here, but make, make a note of it, right? So, what does it say? The total number of candidates appeared in civil services category in 2007 is what? 58,000, right? The number is in 58,000. And the graduates out of the total candidates appeared is 75%. Remember, the graduates are given in percentage. Now, 75% of what? 75% of this 58,000 here. Are you able to follow? So, if at all we have to find out the number of graduates of civil services in 2007, we should take 75% of 58,000. And likewise for all the other uh, years and all the other categories there. Okay. Now see, the question, the total number of candidates who appeared for CS and ES together in 2011 was 25% more than the total number of candidates who appeared for the same together in 2010. So basically the total of both the categories, civil services and engineering services in 2011 was 25% more than the total in 2010. Right? Total number of candidates in both the categories together in 2000. Now, what's the total in 2010? See, 76,000 in civil services and 40,000 in engineering services. Right? So, total in 2010 is 76 plus 40. 76 plus 40, which is 116. Right? 116,000. Right? Remember, all the numbers here are in 116,000. This is total of 2010. Now, what is the total in 2011? The total in 2011 is 25% more. 25% more meaning what? 116,000 plus 25% of 116,000, right? So you don't have to write every step here or each part here. If you can do the calculation mentally, you will be able to save a lot of time. Like for example, 25% of 116,000 will be 29,000. And uh, 116,000 plus 29,000 is 1,45,000. So we can say the total of 2011 is 145. It's, it's all about calculation, right? Nothing complex about data interpretation, right? It all depends on your calculation ability. The faster you do your calculations, the faster you will arrive at the answers. Now, total is 145,000 for the year 2011. Then he says, how many female candidates appeared for both the exams together in 2011 if they formed two-fifth of the total number of candidates appearing for both CS and ES in that year? So we now have to find out the female in 2011. And the data says, the question says, the female candidates formed two-fifth of the total number. What's the total number? We have already measured, 145. So females will be two fifth of one forty five thousand. How much is two fifth of one forty five thousand? So this is twenty nine times, right? Twenty nine into two fifty eight thousand. So your answer would be fifty eight thousand, which is option two. And glad to see that all of you have got the right answer. But just remember, you have to be very very quick and of course accurate in your calculations. All right. So although the question looks to be lengthy here, the solution is simple, right? You can cut down a lot of steps here. You can cut down the first step. Second, in fact, I would say nothing has to be uh, done on paper here. Right? Without putting that on paper, you can say option 2 is the answer. So that's about the first one. Look at the next question asked along with this. What is the ratio of number of graduates who had appeared for ES in 2010? Now, look at this. The ratio of number of graduates. Graduates is given the second column for each category. Who had appeared for ES in 2010. So, you have to read the questions very carefully. ES is engineering services. Now, graduates of engineering services in 2010, how much is it? 60%. 60% of what? 40,000. So, 60% of 40,000. Ratio, right? So, this is the first term of the ratio. Two, the number of graduates who appeared in CS in 2010. So, this is to what? Graduates of CS in the same year. 
CSA civil services, right? In the same year is 50%. 50% of what? 76,000. So 50% of 76,000. Do this calculation and you'll get your answers. Remember, the point to be noted here is we are working on a ratio. Ratio or for that matter, let's say when we have to do some percentage based calculation, especially when it comes to ratios. Ratio is a comparison. You know that ratio is a comparison of value, right? This is a comparison. Now the point is, whenever you are comparing two values or two different type or two different values there, what all is common there can be avoided. You can you can just neglect that. Like for example, you don't really have to calculate 60% of 40,000 and 50% of 76,000. If you see, this is like 60 by 100 into 40,000 divided by 50 by 100 into 76,000. Now writing this itself is a waste of time. You should know that this 100 and 100 in the denominator gets cancelled in both numerator and denominator. And then this 40,000 zeros will anyway get cancelled. Right? So a smart person will not write all these things on paper. He'll simply say the ratio is 60 into 40 is to 50 into 76. Take only that part of the number or that part of the term which is going to impact the answer. Right? Percentage is common anyway. It gets cancelled. This 1000 is also common in numerator and denominator. So that gets eliminated. Right? So don't, don't even waste your time in writing that. Right? Even if you have put this percentage symbol, it takes one second. You have put two such symbols here. So two seconds are gone. You have written off two times. Waste of time. You have written K. Waste of time. So only focus on what has to be done. It is going to be 15 to 76. This is going to be 16 to 40. Do it carefully. Right? And then one, one common mistake which I would uh, you know, say most of us would commit in such type of questions is not taking the ratio in the right format. He has asked us to do it for ES versus CS. ES is to CS. Right? If you don't read it properly or if you are in a hurry, maybe you take it CS versus ES and you will get a wrong answer there. So, so be very careful. Right? Don't, don't commit such silly mistakes. Again, you can say zeros get cancelled here. Right? So 6 into 40. 6 into 40 is how much? 240 is to. Or maybe you can do further can cancellations. 46 and 76 both are divisible by 4. Anyway, 6 into 40 is 240, 5 into 76. How much is 5 into 76? 380. So what will be the answer? 12 is to 19. Right? 20 into 12, 20 into 19. Option 3 is the correct answer. Right? 12 is to 19. But like I said, the answer is not important. What matters here is how quickly do you arrive at the answer. And for that, you have to be, you know, very, very sharp. You should not be wasting your precious time in doing all this drama in the exam. Right? Just take up what is important, work on that and get the answer. Here's the next one, question number three on this data. The total number of graduates who appeared for ES in 2008 is what percent of total number of graduates who appeared for CS in the same year? 30 seconds and your time starts now. Fifty. Nirmal, Hina, Ranjit, Ranjita and Sangeeta, all of you have got fifty. Let's look at the solution. So what does it say? The total number of graduates who appeared for ES in 2008 is what percent of total number of graduates who appeared for CS in the same year. Now this is a percentage based question, right? This is in which form X is what percent of Y. You see this is like X and this is Y. So total number of graduates who appeared for ES in 2008, X is what percent of the total number of graduates who appeared for CS in the same year, y. x is what percent of y? x is what percent of y is taken as x by y into 100. Now here again if you see x by y is like a ratio and you know that in ratio all those common uh, terms get cancelled, right? So don't even waste your time in writing those values, right? We are not worried about the absolute value here. How many candidates had appeared or how many candidates had graduated. We have to do a percentage based calculation. So don't waste your time in putting up all those symbols and unnecessary numbers. Now you know X is total graduates who appeared for ES in 2008. What is that for ES in 2008? ES 2008. 50 into 36. You can directly put 50 into 36 here. Don't write 50% of 36,000. Don't do that. Divide by Y. Total number of candidates who appeared for CS in the same year. How much is CS in the same year? 60 into 60. 60 into 60. This multiplied by 100. Yes or no? And then don't write x by y into 100. This, this was written here only for your uh, clear understanding, right? You don't have to put that formula on paper. You won't be awarded extra marks for that. Whether you do it in one step or ten steps, you'll get only one mark. 
right? So be smart, be wise, and cut down the number of steps. So what happens here? 16 to 60 is 3600. So 36 goes how many times? 100 times here. Yes or no? Simple. 16 to 60 is 3600. In the numerator, you only have 36. So that gets cancelled here 100 times. And 100 and 100 gets cancelled. So your answer will be 50. 50% which is option 5. Alright? Next one. The next question here says, what is the difference? What is the difference between the average number of candidates who appeared for CS in the year 2007 and 2008 and the average number of candidates who appeared for ES in the same years together? So this question is based on difference between two values. Where each value is an average. So 30 or 45 seconds again and your time starts now. Option 3, 26,000 is what all of you have got, right? Bonnie, Kumar, Suveda and many others have responded. Option 3. So shall we look at the solution now? Yes. What does it say? What is the difference between the average number of candidates who had appeared for CS in the year 2007 and 2008? Now CS in 2007 and 2008, we have to take the average. Average of what? The number of candidates who had appeared. Right? Number of candidates who had appeared. So what is the average of 58 and 60? You know average is sum of the values by number of values. Right? So 58 plus 60 divided by 2. But since these are like two consecutive even numbers, you know that average is always the middle number. I mean average is always the number that comes between these two. So what is the average of 58 and 60? 59. You don't have to use any formula there. It's like simple, right? Average of 44 and 46 is going to be 45. Okay. So average for the first part is 59. Now we have to find out the difference. Difference between this average and uh, the average of average number of candidates who appeared for ES in the same years. So engineering services in the same years, 2007 and 8. What is the number of candidates? 30 and 36. Again, for 30 and 36, what will be the average? 33 will be the average. So difference of these two values. Yes or no? 30 and 36 are like average, you know, for two values is always the, you know, middle of it. I mean, the number that falls exactly between 30 and 36, right? Which is 33. Or 30 plus 36 is 66. 66 divided by 2 is 33. So 59 minus 33. How much is 59 minus 33? 26. And these were in thousands. Remember, this was not 59. This was 59,000. This was 33,000. So difference will also be in thousands. Uh, 26,000 which is option 3. So I think uh, 10 seconds job, right? Not more than that. Next question. Next one. I think this is the last one uh, from this uh, data interpretation set. What is the total number of graduates who appeared for both CS and ES together in the year 2009? 66,300 is what Nirmal has got. I think all others have also got option 1 as the answer, right? Lucy Singh, Lucy King, Venkat, Bhaskar, Ranjita. And we have uh, Harsh, Shri Harsh, Vikram Reddy, Ranjit, Bindu, Malik. All of you have got option 1, 66,300. So, looks like that's the correct answer. Let's quickly solve this now. What is the total number of graduates who appeared for both CS and ES together in 2009? So, in 2009, total number of graduates for both CS and ES. Now, graduates, you know, is given in terms of percentages. Percentages of the total number of candidates appeared. So, 65% of 70,000 plus 40% of 52,000. Yes or no? So, number of graduates of CS in 2009 is 65% of 70,000. Plus the number of graduates in the engineering services in the year 2009 is 40% of 52,000. Now like I said, here comes your you know, calculation ability plays a key role. If you are not very strong in calculations, you will end up wasting a lot of time by putting steps on paper. But if you can do it mentally, you will you'll save a lot of time. Right? Like for example, 65%, how do you measure this? 65% is not 65%, 65% is 50% plus 10% plus 5%. That will give you the answer very easily. Although the number of steps would increase, but each step is very simple, and and you can you can uh, complete each step in what split of a second. 
So 65% of 70,000 should be taken as 50% of 70,000 plus 10% of 70,000 plus 5% of 70,000, right? So 50% of 70,000, 35,000, 10% of 70,000, 7,000, 5%, 3,500, 3.5,000. So this is like split and merge. You split the percentage and then calculate the values and then merge all the values. Similarly, 40% of 52,000. Now 40% again can be taken as 50% minus 10% or 10% into 4. See 10% of 52,000 is 5.2,000. Into 4 will be 20.8,000. Simple. Now add all these values. So 35 plus 7 is 42. 42 plus 3.5 is 45.5. 45.5 plus 20.8. So first add the integer part, right? 45.5 plus 20, 65.5. 65.5 plus 0.8, 66.3. 66.3 and you know that these are all in thousands so answer would be option 1 again remember explanation would take a little time right don't go by the amount of time that we have taken to arrive at the answer that I have spent here I was trying to explain it to you if I have to do it myself would, would save a lot of time right at least half of the time would be saved and, and the same applies to you also right so don't go by the length of the explanation right just look at how you can cut down the number of steps the more you put on paper, the more time it takes. As, as simple as that. You get it? So these were five questions from data interpretation. There's another set of five questions on data interpretation, but I think you can do it easily, right? Now that we have discussed about the table form, that line graph should be very easy for you to solve. Now what we'll do is we have another 15 to 20 minutes left. So let's look at some of the independent questions, right? There are a couple of very interesting questions that were asked in previous years SBI PO preliminary exam, right? So we'll, we'll look at some independent questions and see, see to it that we solve as many questions as possible in that time there, okay? So I hope all of you have followed this, right? I think the key takeaway is that you have to be very sharp in your calculations, right? If you can do the calculations quickly, mentally, without putting pen on paper for everything, you will you'll be able to solve these five questions in less than two, two and a half minutes, right? Not, not more than two and a half minutes about 150 seconds for 5 months, which is in my view a very good uh, time management, alright? Of course, there will be some complex questions elsewhere where you will have to probably spend a little more time so it will get balanced out, okay? But anything more than 150 seconds for these 5 questions would be, you know, unacceptable, right? So work on your calculations, right? You have about one one and a half month left for the exam. Ensure that you spend at least half an hour a day on practicing on numbers and that's what I had discussed in the exam strategy uh, preparation strategy uh, session as well right remember we had one preparation strategy session for SBAPO exam uh, a couple of weeks back right so same was discussed ensure that you spend 45 minutes to 60 minutes every day on improving your calculation in duty okay so move on moving on to the independent questions now I think Suresh Kumar wants us to take up the ages problem and he says time and distance problems also. So I think we have questions on both the topics in, from the previous paper. Let's, let's look at those. So sharing my screens again. And let's solve some independent questions. Okay. So I think this is on uh, partnership, which is an easy one to do. Let's, let's start with this question on time and work. Right? Interesting one. It says a project manager hired 16 men to complete a project in 38 days. However, after 30 days, he realized that only five, nine, 5 by 9 of the work is complete. How many more men does he need to hire to complete the project on time? Options have been given there, 48, 24, 32, 16, 36. Uh, I think this should take about 30, 30, 40 seconds, right? So your time starts now. Sangeeta says, please tell us about... Uh, you know, simple and compound this. So we look at one question from that as well. Let's see. Try and solve as many questions as possible in this limited time. Okay, answers have started coming in. Molik has got 32. Lucy King has got 16. Sondaria has got 48. So it's like you guys are giving me all the possible options there, right? 32, 16, 48. All three are there in the options. Maybe some, some of you have got 36 and you know, 24 as well. So we are done. Yeah, I think Harsh has got option 2, 24. Saini has got 48. So all possible options have been 
marked already. Venkat has got 16. Anmol says it is 24. Well, I thought this is a simple one, but it looks like you're not very prepared for this, this type of time and work question. Again, somebody mentioned in the chat that we have, I'm not able to do the payment for SBPU. What do we do? Well, I think uh, this usually happens, right? Uh, towards the last date, uh, there is a huge traffic that is seen and on, on the website there and hence it slows down and there are a lot of issues. I think considering that they have extended the date, I think point number one here is you shouldn't have waited so long, right? The application started on 4th or 5th of May, if I'm not wrong. So what were you doing all these days? That's point number one, right? Never leave it for the last day. And that is what I stressed on in the session on uh, preparation strategy, right? First, complete your application, right? Complete your application as early as possible. Anyway, what's happened has happened. Let's not worry about it, but be careful from the next time. What I would suggest is do it, you know, probably late night or early in the morning when the traffic is usually not very high. Okay. Uh, take a, choose some odd time, right? Let's, let's say maybe 1 p.m. or 2, uh, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Uh, and then try and complete it. I'm sure you should be able to do that. So not a very clear response for this particular question. Although many of you have got the answers, but answers are not in sync, right? Different possible answers have been given. 48, 24, 16, 36, 32. Let's, let's look at the solution, right? Let's, let's see the smart way of answering this. See, you know that work is proportional to number of men and number of days. Or I would say it is proportional to the product of number of men to number of days. It is proportional to number of men. It is also proportional to number of days, right? And a very important equation that we have in time and work is this. The ratio of work. W1 by W2 can be taken as M1 D1 by M2 D2. You can also include H there, which is for the number of hours, M1 D1 H1 by M2 D2 H2. Right? If at all, number of hours are also involved. But this question involves only two variables, number of men and number of days. So let's not worry about it. So this is the equation that we'll be using here. W1 by W2 equals to M1 D1 by M2 D2. Right? What is W here? W is the work, M is the number of men and D is the number of days. Alright, now what does it say? A project manager had 16 men, so this is like M1, we are talking about the original case. He had 16 men to complete a project in 38 days. However, after 30 days, he realized that only 5 ninth of the work is complete. What fraction of the work is done? Only 5 by 9 of the work was done. After how many days? After 30 days. Which means these 16 men who were employed have worked for 30 days. So we can say the D1 value of D1 is 30. They have worked for 30 days. And how much of the work got over? Only 5 9 of the work got over. This is W1. You are able to follow. So W1 is 5 by 9 of the total work. M1 is 16 and D1 is 30. Now you may ask me what is then 38 days? What is this 38 days? We will come to that later, right? So that's about the first uh, case. Now what happens? See the point is, he wanted the work to get over in 38 days. 30 days is very close to 30, 30 days, right? He wanted the overall work to get over in 30 days. After 30 days, he finds only 5 by 9 of the work is done, which is actually very close to half. 5 by 9 is like what? Uh, close to 54, 55 percentage, right? It's like 55.55 percentage. Only 55.55 percentage of the work is done. In how many days? 30 days. So we have only 8 more days to go. You're getting it? So if he wants to complete the work in time, in, in these 30 days, which was decided earlier, he will definitely have to employ more men because these 16 men were not able to do you know the work proportionately in 30 days. So what does he say now? How many more men does he need to hire to complete the project on time? On time means what? In 38 days. And remember already 30 days have passed. So he has only 8 more days left. So definitely he has to increase the workforce. He has to strengthen the workforce there so that the work can be done in time. So see what do we do here? W1, how much of the work is over? 5 by 9 of the work is over. So W1 can be taken as 5 by 9 of the total work. Divided by W2. W2 will consider the remaining work. How much is the remaining work? See, how many more men does he need to hire to complete the project on time? So, what amount of project is over? 5 9 is over. What is left out? 4 by 9 is left out. 4 by 9 of W equals to M1, 
D1, 30. Let us keep it as it is. We are going to work on M2, the number of men needed to complete this remaining work, 4 by 9th of the work. In how many days? What is D2? D2 should be the remaining 8 days. See, total 38 days of which 30 days have already passed. So, D2 should be taken as 38 minus 30. Because the remaining 4 ninth of the work has to be done only in the remaining 8 days. That's it. Simplify this. You will get the number of men required. Total number of men required. Right? Solve this. What happens? So, see, again, if you have understood the question really well, you will not write this W, W and by 9 and by 9 and waste your time. You will simply say 5 by 4. 5 parts of the work is over. 4 parts has to be done. So, 5 by 4 equals to 16 into 30 by M into 8. Now, this gets cancelled 2 times. 5 here goes how many times? 6 times. So, 12 into 4. So, basically upon simplification, M2 will come out to be what? 2 into 6, 12 and multiplied by 4 on the denominator, right? So, 12 into 4 is what? 48. So, which means 48 men are required to complete the project on time. Right? 40 men, 48 men are required to complete the remaining 4 ninth of the work in the remaining 8 days. But what is the question? How many more men? How many more men? Remember, he already has 16 men with him. How many more men are needed? Right? How many additional men? So, what is the additional men? Number of men needed? Additional workforce? Out of 48, 16 is already there. So, just consider the remaining part of it. 32. And that's your answer. Option 3 is your answer. I will follow. Option 3 is your answer. Just simplify that. One equation, right? That one step. And of course, the other step is to, you know, remove 16, which is already there from 48 to get the additional workforce needed. So, 32, option 3 would be the answer. I hope all of you have followed this. See, I have explained you the solution in detail here. You can, you can cut down all these steps. I will show in red what need not be put on paper, right? See, this, this is not needed, right? You know the method, you know the concept there, right? Work is proportional to men today. So, W1 by W2 equals to M1 D1 by M2 D2. Again, don't write by 9, W and all that part. Simply say 5 by 4. 5 parts of the work is over. 5 by 9 means what? 5 parts is over. Remaining 4 parts equals to what? There were 16 men who worked for 30 days. How many men are needed to complete the remaining work in 8 days? Solve for M from this and then take the difference of M from 16. As simple as that. Aditya has got a query here. Aditya says, why answer is not coming when I take 16 into 38 by m into 8 equals to 5 by 4? No, the answer is not coming because you have taken 38. Remember, it's not 38, it is 30. You should not take 38 here. 16 men have not worked for 38 days. Aditya. 16 into 38 is the total work, Aditya. Correct. So, why are you considering total work with 5 parts then? Are you able to follow? You should not take 16 into 38. You should take 16 into 30. Because 16 men have worked only for 30 days. Yes or no? See, after 30 days. After 30 days, he realized that 5 by 9 of the work is over. So, 16 men have worked for 30 days to complete 5 parts of the work. How many men should work for the remaining 8 days so that the remaining 4 parts of the work is done? Yes, Aditya has acknowledged that he has got it. So, I can now move on to the next question. I hope all of you have followed this, right? Well, I thought many of you would... Most of you would get the right answer, but there was a surprise, right? Most of you said 24, option 2 is the answer. Very few said option 3, 32. Okay? Chalo, I think we'll move on to the next one. We are close to 7 already, so let's quickly solve a few more questions. I, I'll choose some typical ones, right? I mean, not very straight. Uh, this I thought is a simple one. Let's, let's see if we can come back. Huh? Look at this question on menstruation. I think this is important. Interesting question. Important doesn't mean that the same question will come in the exam again. But the concept is important. Let's see how many of you get the right answer. The question says a rectangular plot 55 meter long and 45 meter broad has two concrete cross roads of equal width running in the middle of it. One parallel to the length and the other parallel to the breadth. The rest of the plot is used as lawn. If the area of the lawn is 1911 meters square, what is the width of each of the crossroads in meter? Options are 5, 5.5, 6, 4 and 4.5. So like I've mentioned earlier, mensuration is an important area and it's a formula based topic. You need to know formulae to solve these questions, right? However, this one is not just 
uh, substitution in the formula, right? This also needs some intellect to decide uh, the right equation there, okay? Hina says, please, if possible, take a question on ages. Okay, we'll do that. Let's, let's work on this first and then we'll move to a question on ages. Venkat Chalapati has got the answer as 4000. I don't know what he's trying to say by 4000, right? 4000 is not there in the options at all. Shantanu has got 48. I think Shantanu is uh, not watching the session live. It's long back. 48 is not the right answer, by the way, right? It should be 48 minus 16. Okay, Bindu has given us a solution. He says, uh, total work is 16 into 38, which is 608. 16 into 30 is 480. So remaining work is 128. So 128 is 8 into x. Then x equals to 128 by 8, which is 16. Well, that's a wrong uh, solution, Bindu, because the total work is not 16 into 38. 16 into 38 is what he had assumed. Right? The project manager thought 16 men, if they work for 38 days, they can complete the work. But did that happen? No, that didn't happen. Yes or no? If the question says 16 men can complete a work in 38 days, then you will say total work is 16 to 38. But here it didn't say that. The question said a project manager hired 16 men to complete a work in 38 days. But that didn't happen, right? After 30 days, he found that only 5 ninth of the work was over. Which means they were not working at the rate as expected. Right? So you cannot take total work as 16 to 38. Okay, Himanshu has got the answer for this one. Option 3, 6 is what he says. Suveda also has got 6. Harsh Shri has got 6 meters. Sangeeta has got 6 meters. Good. So glad to see that you've got the answers. Right or wrong, we'll get to know, but at least all the answers are matching. So all of you are thinking in the same line, right? 6 meters is what everybody has said so far. Anmol has also got 6 meters. Good. Let's look at the solution now. See, what does it say? A rectangular plot with uh, length 55 meters and width is 45 meters has two concrete crossroads of equal width, right? Both the uh, roads are of equal width, running in the middle of it, one parallel to the length and the other parallel to the breadth. So if you, if you try and visualize the figure here, there is a rectangular plot, the length of which is 55 and the breadth is 45, right? So this is the length, 55 meters, and the breadth is 45 meters, right? Now it has two concrete crossroads, two concrete crossroads running in the middle of it, one parallel to the length, another parallel to the breadth. So basically there's, see this is the length. So there's a concrete road in the middle, parallel to the length. And then there's a road parallel to the breadth. So this is like a crossroads. I mean, it, though it looks like a flag of Switzerland, it's like this, you know, this is the crossroad. This, one, this plus sign that you see is that crossroad and this is the plot. Now the rest of the plot is used as lawn. The rest of the plot is what? This area. This, this shaded portions are used as lawn. You are getting it? So there are like four smaller rectangles which are used as lawn and in the middle we have crossroads. Concrete crossroads. Now the area of the lawn is 1911. So put, you know area of this lawn, total area of the lawn is 1911. What is the width of each of the crossroads? What is the width of each of the crossroads? So basically we have to find out the width, width of each of the crossroads. Of course, both the crossroads are of equal width. So we don't have to worry about two different widths here, right? He has given of equal width, right? So what do we do? First of all, let us find out the area of the crossroads. Area of the crossroads. See, area of crossroads will be equal to what? Area of rectangle minus area of lawn. From the total area of the rectangle, if you subtract the area of the lawn, we get the remaining area will be the area of the crossroads. So do that. Area of rectangle will be what? 40, uh, 55 into 45. You know, right? Area of a rectangle is length into breadth, both of which are given to us. Minus area of lawn is straight away given as 1911. Simplify this. 55 into 45 will be 2475. How do you do this? 50 plus 5, 50 minus 5. 55 should be taken as 50 plus 5. 45 can be taken as 50 minus 5. So that, that will be the form of a plus b into a minus b. a squared minus b squared, right? So 50 square minus 5 square will be 2475. 2475 minus 1911 will give you how much? 2.5. 2.5 into 
2400 minus 1900 is 500 and 75 minus 70 64. So this is like 564, 564 meters square. This is the area of crossroads, area of the crossroads. Now, how will you measure the area of the, we have already got the numerical value, but as such, let's say if you have to measure, let's assume the width of the crossroad is x, the width is x. What will be the total area? See, what will be the area of this portion? Area of this horizontal crossroad, horizontal crossroad, length is 55, it is parallel to the length, right? So length is 55 and width is x. So we can say 55x plus what will be the area of the vertical crossroad? This time the length is 45, right? And the width is x only, breadth is x. So 45x. So 55x plus 45x is equal to 564. If this is what you are feeling, you are wrong. If this is what is your understanding, you are wrong. Because when you add 55x plus 45x, you have considered this small square in the middle twice. You understand? This fully shaded box that we have has been counted twice in the horizontal crossroad as well as in the vertical crossroad. So that has to be taken care of. Now what is the area of the shaded box? x square. See, this is like a square, right? Both the sides are x and x. So x square. So from this 55x plus 45x, you have to subtract x square. Now this is balanced and x is the width. So one equation, one unknown, you can solve and get the answer. Are you able to follow? 55x is the horizontal cross road. 45x is the vertical cross road. But by adding these two areas, you get the common area being counted twice. You have to remove that. So x square has to be subtracted. So basically, 100x minus x square is 564. Now, this is a quadratic equation which you can simplify, find out the two values of x, one of which will probably be negative and the other one can be taken as an answer. But a smart student will not solve the quadratic equation. Instead, he will substitute the options one after the other and see which one satisfies. Right? Substitute 5. See, you know that if you substitute 5, this is 500. 500 minus something cannot be 564. So, 5 is cancelled. Similarly, if you substitute 5.5, 5.5 into 100 is 550. 550 minus something cannot be 564. So, cancelled. Substitute 6. Again, 4 and 4.5 are anyway ruled out. See, anything less than 6 here cannot be the answer. Let's say if you take 5 point... You are getting it? Anything less than 5.5 cannot be the answer because if you substitute 5.5, you get 550. 550 minus something can be 564? No. So anything less than 5.5 is wrong. So 5, 5.5, 4 and 4.5 are all gone. Only option left out is 6 and that has to be the answer. Substitute 6, what happens? 6 into 100 is 600. Minus x square 36. 600 minus 36 is 564. So option 3, 6 will be the answer. So elimination. What are we doing? We are not solving the quadratic equation. We are using elimination method or substitution. You are substituting the options back into the question to see which one satisfies. Okay? Option 3, 6 would be the answer. Now I am sure many of us would go wrong in, in this step. You will not consider minus x square. Minus x square. Right? So be careful about this. x square has to be subtracted. And then don't write all these unnecessary steps. First of all, I would say no need to draw the diagram. You can you can visualize that, right? So cut that part. Don't write this equation. Don't write any of these steps. You, you know that area of the crossroad will be 55 into 45, which is 2475 minus 911. So the only step that you put on paper is this. And substitute the values. So it wouldn't take more than 30, 35 seconds. Alright? I think time is up, we are already at 7 o'clock, but let's quickly take one more question. Uh, I think we'll take up a question on ages. Many of you wanted me to solve a question on ages, so let's see where that question on ages is. I have seen one question on ages in the paper today. Where is that? Yeah, here's the one. So the last question of the session today, I wish I could do more, but we'll have to follow the time here. We'll meet again, we'll meet again, uh, we, we keep meeting on Wednesdays, right, with these free sessions. So we'll meet again uh, after a few weeks and see if we can solve the remaining questions. Okay, so one last question uh, on ages. The question here says, Joe's present age is 2 7th of his father's present age. Right, Joe's present age is 2 7th of his father's present age. Joe's brother is 3 years older than Joe. Right, 3 years older than Joe. And the ratio of the present age of Joe's father to that of Joe's brother is 14 is to 15. What is Joe's present age? So I think 
It's all about converting these English statements into mathematical equations. You have to convert into mathematical equations, three equations, three unknown values, solve and you will get the required answer. So 30 seconds should be more than sufficient and your time starts now. Okay, we have already got answers here from Kumar who says it is option 3. Harsh also has got option 3, 12 years. Aditya, Vikram, all of you have got 12 years. Venkat also says it is 12 years. Yes. Well, I thought this is a very simple one, but there was a demand for the question on ages. So, took it up. Now, what does it say? Joe's present age is 270 of his father's present age. So, I think one important point that I would like to mention here is when you are answering such questions, it is it is very important that you choose right variables, the nomenclature specifically. Like, like generally we say Joe's present age, let us assume X, father's present age Y, Joe's uh, brother's age uh, Z and then you will try to frame the equations. Nothing wrong, you will get the correct answer. But it becomes a lot more confusing because at the end you will have to find out what is Joe's present age. So you will have to check is it X or Y or Z. You know, you have to go back to your starting point to find out what was taken as Joe's present age. Was it X or Y or Z? And then based on that you have to do the calculation. A smart person will not choose variables like this. I will say Joe's present age is J, father's present age is F and Joe's brother will say B. So it becomes very easy, right? Just by looking at the variable itself, you know what person are we referring to, right? So very, very important that you choose the right variables there, okay? Joe's present age is 2 7 of father's present age. So J equals to 2 by 7 F. Equation number one. Joe's brother is 3 years older than Joe. Joe's brother B is 3 years older than Joe. Means what? J plus 3. He's 3 years older than Joe. So Joe's present age plus 3 years will be Joe's brother's age. The ratio of the present age of Joe's father to that of Joe's brother is 14 is to 15. Joe's father F and Joe's brother B, their ratio is 14 is to 5. Sorry, 14 is to 5. Three equations, three unknowns, can you solve? Yes. What is Joe's present age? J has to be calculated. Now you know that you have to focus on J. You don't have to look at X, Y, Z and all that. You're getting it? So just focus on J and see how do you complete it. I think simple. Father is to brother is 14 is to 5. So we can say father is 14x and brother is 15x. 14 parts and 15 parts. F equals to 14x and B equals to 5x. Substitute these in the other two equations and get the answer. Get, get, get the value of J. So from this we can say J is equal to 2 by 7 into F. F can be taken as 14x. So this is like 4x. And from the second equation we get what? Uh, B is 5x, right? So 5x equals to j plus 3 or we can say j is equal to 5x minus 3. Now the point is j is equal to 4x and j is also equal to 5x minus 3. Can you get the value of x from this? Both are referring to j. j is equal to 4x. Here it says j equals to 5x minus 3. So from this we can say 5x minus 3 is equal to 4x. So what's the value of x? x is equal to 3. That's it. The moment you know what is x, you can find out all the three values here. j, b or f, whatever is needed. Right? See, f is 14x. Suppose the question says, what is father's age? 14 parts. Each part is 3. So 14 into 3, 42. What is Joe's brother's age? 5 parts. Each part is 3. 5 parts will be 15. But anyway, we have to find out Joe's present is j. What is j? See, you can take j as either as 4x or 5x minus 3. So j will be equal to 4x. 4 into 3. 12. 12. Option 3 will be the answer. Again, don't write all the steps that you see here. Right? I mean, of course, these equations are needed, but don't write f equals to 14x, b equals to 5x. That is obvious, right? 14 is to 14 is to 5 is what? 14x and 5x. Right? These equations are needed. These equations are needed. I would say, okay, we will also put these equations. But don't write 14x, 5x and all that. And then don't write x equals to 3. You know that x will come out to be 3. We need 4x. Right? So don't write 4 into 3, 12 and all that. See, this is what we save time. If you think shortcut is what is going to help you, no, it is not the shortcut formula that helps you. It is your... It is your presentation, right? Again, presentation doesn't mean you have to be good in presentation. You should not put pen on paper, right? Cut down the steps. That is the key, right? That's the shortcut. Keep it simple. Keep it short. The shortcut is keep it short. Are you getting it? So the answer for this question will be 12 years, which is option 3. Rightly, all of you have got that. Okay. So I think with this, uh, we come to the end of this session. I wish I could solve more questions, but we have already delayed it by 10 minutes. So let's, let's close it here. We'll meet again on 
the coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. I think the session will be on English language, right? The details of which will be made available on our Facebook page and the YouTube channel, right? And the next one would be on reasoning ability from the previous year's SBAPO paper. So we'll keep doing these sessions on SBAPO uh, previous year paper till the SBAPO exam starts. And I'm sure all these free live sessions will add great value to your preparation, right? But then we have a full program available for all of you to get ready for the exam, right? And this has got lots of videos and ebooks and online mock tests, practice tests, all day level exams, which can, you know, which can help you get ready for the exam, you know, fully, right? You know, in a wholesome way there. So please try and explore our programs on our website talentsprint.com slash bank, right? Talentsprint.com slash bank or you can also uh, call us on our toll free number which is 1-800-2000-916, right? I'll, I'll put it here, 1-800-2000-916, right? You can call on this number to get the details, all the details about our online programs which will give you the anytime, anywhere flexibility, right? You can sit at your home and get ready for this VAQ exam. You don't have to step out and go to a coaching center and waste your time and travel, right? And, you know, fully planned program, but you can do it at your own convenience. All right, so try and explore that. You have lots of options which you can explore and choose one for you and keep practicing, right? Remember the best shortcut is to practice more right practice more and, and cut down the steps right cut short the uh, solution there so keep practicing and uh, keep uh, you know improving your calculation ability especially to boost your score in the numerical ability section right we'll meet again uh, wednesday 6 pm right with a session on english language which will help you for bank exams till then keep practicing and take very good care of yourself yourself all the best Hello friends, welcome to Talent Sprint. Ever wondered what successful students do that you don't? What is the secret behind their success in these highly competitive exams? What is that one thing which can help you crack these competitive exams? In this session today, we are going to look at a super technique to solve frequently asked questions from percentage. So at the end of this video, you will be able to solve these type of commonly asked questions from percentages in a jiffy. Let's look at the question first. If A's salary is 25 percentage more than that of B, then by what percentage is B's salary less than that of A? 